Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to CCXRC. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Axial AX24. This thing is tiny, but it caused a lot of ruckus. It was a big deal the day it was announced. A lot of people weren't happy about it. They wanted to see something else. But I was pretty excited about it and um, was one of the people that was vocal about being excited about it. And I thought it was cool that they paid tribute to the old XC1 from uh, Axial. So it's kind of a throwback in the body and the stylings of this thing. So um, it isn't a copy of just some other thing that's out there. It is a copy of itself many years ago. But uh, yeah, it's of course smaller than the original. But um, I think it's pretty cool. It's bringing us four wheel steer to this 124 scale Axial lineup, which is very cool for those of us that do comps. And um, we haven't had four wheel steer in our comps, and this is going to make it probably easier for us to introduce that. So that's an exciting thing for me, and that's why I was excited about it. Plus, it looked like it handled pretty good in uh, the influencer videos that came out of this thing. So we're going to get our hands on it. We're going to do an unboxing, do some run footage, let you guys know what we think. We've been wheeling 24 scale a lot recently, so... Lots of hands-on time, drive time with the scale and kind of know some of the ins and outs, quirks, flaws, all of that that we've come to know and love about the 24th scale RC world uh, and how to improve things. So that's the cool thing. They're definitely a low starting point. At 160 bucks, they've included four-wheel steer on this, which is more servo. Uh, it's another servo, another front axle, which those typically cost more, and yet they kept the price still at 160 Pretty impressive axial on that. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing and show you guys what you get in this box. For those that were sneaking a peek in the background, yes, I did also buy the green one. Um, and we're gonna have two of the orange ones and a green one uh, so that my sons and I can drive them. But we're gonna be doing the orange one and taking that one for a run. Quick look at it. Ready to run, everything in the box, batteries for the radio and for the car are included. Uh, says two year limited warranty, LED lights. You can see the color choice there. Four wheel steer, bearings, 51 millimeter coil over shocks, LED rock lights. Um, then it's talking about the durable side plate chassis and um, lots of flex using that and those shocks together. And uh, these are the you can see here it says in 2007 the 110 scale axial ax10 platform revolu revolutionized rc crawling this xc1 pays homage to that groundbreaking rig with a replica body and livery uh, plus 1.0 rockster wheels and 2.44 inch rock lizards tires getting nostalgic here so we got to break this seal and the one up over here we're going to open this up Alright, still zip tied in here. Two zip ties to release it. Oh, got the tire. Probably not the best way to do that, but oh well. There we go. There's the truck. A little bit bouncy on the suspension. But if you're going slow for the most part, it shouldn't matter. But look at that. I mean, it just like stands up straight just about. That's very impressive. All right. Batteries here. We're going to need these. Instruction manual, sticker, bind plug, a little tool, directions. We've had enough of these. We're not going to deal with the directions. All right, charger and the radio. We can see how it's all packaged. That's why we took the time to do this for you so you know what you're looking at when you go through all this. So we are gonna need these batteries. So we'll go ahead and install them now into our new Spectrum SLT3 radio. So these are multi-packaged. There we go. All right, slides off here. These will all drop in. These radios are pretty decent. You find them in some of the other trucks. Nice little three-channel radio, which is going to be great for controlling our four-wheel steer. All 
All right, so there we have it. These things feel awesome in your hand. Nice little rocker here for doing your four wheel steer. You've got steering rate, how much it'll steer. You have got throttle and steering trims. You got throttle reverse right here, steering reverse and 50, 75 and 100 throttle trims. Um, so you can turn it down. So it's like a limiter, um, not actually a trim, throttle limiter. So you can turn it down if you want to have a little bit more control on that lower speed. Uh, but then turn to 100 for all the power. One-handed driving, yes. Lots of lots of yes check marks on that, that radio right there. Checks a lot of boxes for us. Little USB charger. These things work great if you over-discharge your battery on accident. Um, these are really one of the only ways to save it, I find. The best way is just plug it into this. It'll get it charged again. Then you'll be able to charge it using your fast chargers again. And uh, it'll work great. All right, so let's take a quick look at the body itself. This is the throwback. The body can actually tuck into the little rock rails, little boat sides here on the, the side, lets you slide on the rocks a little easier. They have a new skid plate here um, that is flat, which is very welcomed. Um, so excited about that. It has four link instead of having the wishbone up front for uh, either side, since they're both front axles. So that's a new thing that we're seeing with this. So we'll have to be waiting to see what kind of um, links in that come for it. It looks like they're the same length front and rear, which is also very welcome. Makes it easy uh, with the aftermarket and just figuring out what, what goes where. Um, axles are the same, which I dig because I find the worm gear to actually work very well in these for crawling. Some people don't like that you can't just turn the wheels like this because the gears um, have basically a, a, a drag brake. They have resistance. They don't just spin easily. At least the stock gearing, if you get into some of the overdrive ones and you don't run them front and rear, it will allow you to, to turn the wheels freely. But the stock ones uh, does not have that ability. They're nice and slow, lots of power. And so I dig them. But um, not everybody does. We don't all have to like the same things. But I find it to be great because there's so many aftermarket axles that people can use and knuckles and all the things that go along with it. So that to me was huge. When I saw that, I'm like, yes, don't have to worry about that. They do run dog bones. Um, and um, I've had pretty good luck with them. But some people do snap them. So, um, yeah. It can happen. It does have the AS1 servos on here, the um, AXI131619. Very small servos, but um, actually, I've been seeing the videos on this, and they look to do pretty good for straight out of the box. We're just going to take this whole body off since it's just Velcro both. All right, so we've taken off the body now. You can see you could leave it on and just hinge it on this, but uh, we've gone ahead and taken it off. Four steer, everything's very visible now. Plastic links, plastic drive shafts, um, plastic axles, which I am super glad that they kept the same axles as the SCX24. Big fan of them, big fan of the worm gears. So we've already got overdrive for them and lots of hop ups that you can get. Brass parts, uh, metal parts, aluminum, whatever you want to get for them, it's pretty much available for these. And I actually find the worm gears just work really good. They're, these axles are fairly indestructible um, when you get them set up. So uh, you do maybe have some issues with the um, the axles, the, the shafts, axle shafts, because they are dog bones. And so some people turn them too far and then they, you know, catch and they might pop the um, the, the bone out of the, the dog bone or whatever, you know, the, the little uh, pin, I should say, not the bone, uh, the pin out of the dog bone. But um, yeah, I've found them to be very, very great. And, you know, unless you're really bound up, they don't really snap. Um, so um, they've been very good to me. Uh, the servos do seem to work better with this new Spectrum 2-in-1 10-amp ESC receiver here. Seems like the BEC is set higher to give these a little bit more juice and work a little better. Um, so while the motor is still going to kind of choke out on you under, you know, extreme um, use, or if you put a lot of weight in here, it's not going to do great. Same with these servos. If you start putting a lot of weights in the wheels and the axles, 
it may struggle to turn the tires. Speaking of the tires, um, these are the rock lizards. No foams in them, just air. And um, they actually feel like they do pretty decent, honestly. I think they'll, they'll do all right. Maybe a little soft without the foam. Might want to fold over if you put too much weight in them. But for a stock truck, I feel like it's just about the right amount. With looking at the weight and pushing down on them, how the tires are reacting. Looks pretty good. Is an aluminum U-shape chassis here with the little boat flare sides here, sliders on the side. Um, and then it's got this little plastic electronics tray slash uh, it captures your upper suspension uh, mounting points. All of that is in here. Um, the battery door slides open here, access the battery. Now, the one thing about this is it's going to limit you a little bit on what batteries will fit. The 3S's that I have will not fit in there. Um, like a 430, like the old Venom ones that I have here, they do fit in. They're a little bit, little bit snug. They're like, they fit perfect almost. So it's a little bit uh, tighter and it's something to think about. So if your batteries start to swell, they may not fit anymore. But um, it's just something to, to mention. These fit in here great. These are the stock ones. Um, but yeah, got to just be aware of that going in. These seem to last a long time running um, on the stock batteries. So if you can get away with it, they work great. Um, what else? What else? Flat skid plate here. That's very welcomed. Links are the same length. Um, yeah, it's going to make a lot of upgrades very, very easy for this thing. Uh, my buddy, uh, Go Man Go, which I'll put his link in the description and he'll be, uh, up at Reaction running these later, uh, will, um, told me that he was able to fit a baby Goliath in his. So that's cool. This motor, while it is not super powerful, there's enough room barely to get one in here and not interfere with this upper link mount. So that's exciting news. So we're going to go ahead. Um, now that we've kind of showed you this thing, we're, we're going to power it up, take it up to Reaction RC and see how it does. But just a quick test that we like to do here. We'll just give it a quick little run on the desk. You can see the rock lights already lighting up. Turn on my radio. You can see it's just in front wheel steering. You push down on the radio. It's now in four wheel. But if we, I'm going to do this to just hold it left so you see what happens. If I push up on here, it goes back to regular two steer. Up again, goes into the crab walk. So quick double down. So you can kind of cycle through them pretty quick. So. Some people have been saying that they wish it was kind of more remote driven forward or reverse on a like trigger or you hold down and it would make the rear turn left or hold up and make it turn right. That could be pretty cool, honestly, if it just recentered when you would let go and then you decide if you wanted it to be left or right just by pushing the direction. Um, but it actually seems to work quite well and is very easy to switch between on the fly. So um, I don't think it's a big deal. But let's uh, let's flex this thing really quick. All right, got it here on the new course we're working on. Not finished, of course. We got snow on the ground right now, so haven't been able to keep up with it. We're gonna keep it in four steer. See how it does. Had to turn on a cinematic mode there for a minute. Somehow the camera got into that mode. The servos do feel a lot faster, like everybody was saying. Look at it flex. Super cool. And turn off rear steer for a minute. All right, looks good. I'll keep it back on for now. Super cool. I love watching it just kind of work its way around. We're gonna go right for the hard spot here, which is this side hill. No 24 scale that stock can make it up this um, that we've had. So we're going to give it a go with this. Turn off the rear steer for a second. Actually, maybe crab it a little. Try and get it back up the hill a little bit here. Try and 
maintain that back in staying high because they always want to fall there gonna go back down to just front steer oh definitely can feel that upper weight there especially in the thud it made give it another try here i liked that crab walk to keep me kind of up the hill here on this side so we're gonna have to kind of work with that and the stock steering a little bit because now we're kind of getting over on that side that they all fall down which is a bummer all right let's see if we can walk the front go back to the steering here there come on work it up it I'll get stuck right here. Oh, did we really just get it to go over that? We're not out of the woods yet. I feel like we need to maybe go back to crab and go away. Walk it this way now. Oh, look at that. Now we're gonna switch it back to front, actually four steer, and then spin it. Oh my goodness, look at that. We're gonna round that corner and right down. That is insane. Nothing, nothing has done that before. Wow, <laughs> made the corner and back down. All right, that's just a quick test with it, you guys. Now let's take it to Reaction RC and see how it does on the big course. Oh man, the steering is so, so much better for these little courses too, like getting around in general. Oh my gosh. All right, so mine is stock. Dana's running his. Go man, go. Up there, he's got some brass diff covers on it already. And what else did you put? And the skid plate. Mine's just stock. and We'll see how it does with rolling over. That's the one thing I've heard people say. Steering's amazing. We're just leaving it in four steer, because why not? I mean, it's easy enough, I guess, to turn off if you need to there. And driving one-handed even, like here I wouldn't want it on, so. Okay, this could get, whoop. That's pretty steep. There it is. The rear steers more, doesn't it? It's got a little, mine feels like it's steering a little more to the rear. No, I guess not. But the servos are definitely better. Much more power out of the box than the uh, SCX-10 just because the they must be getting more voltage. Just doing front steering. Look at that articulation coming down though. I mean, out of the box. Shoot. I'm still, there, is it as smooth throttle though as the, the, the two? I don't feel like the trigger is as easy on the start for slow crawl. Lot, it feels like it's got a lot more expo. Okay, yeah. Whether that's the motor, whether that's the radio. Yeah, there's something. It doesn't, that slow trigger doesn't happen as quick with it. So it's just getting used to it. it feels like so here, I might, if I put that steering on, we can turn that right to there real easy. See, my front end is the rear to front steering. Doesn't that seem like, a, like almost twice as much to the rear? My servo savers were extremely loose. Ah, uh, so it's tightened down the nut? Yeah. That might be what it's doing. I have my money handy tool in my pocket. I'll check it. 
But the tires are hooking up all right for stock. So here I would want rear off just to reset. Oh, I dig it. I dig it a lot. How much, how long have you been up here running yours? I honestly, Friday night, I let people drive it for about two hours. Wow. And we ran through two batteries. How many people bought them after driving it? Probably a bunch. He sold five Friday night. Wow. Whoop. Got bound in that one. I don't, this is kind of a tricky one anyway. You get hung in there. See that tire hangs. Just wants to roll it over. Yep. I see you get that tire up over differently, I think. There it is. Okay. Nice. This is going to be murder though. I wonder if we crab it. Like that. Oh, come on. I got to switch it back. Oh, that was looking so good until it wasn't. Yeah, both servo savers are definitely letting letting it. I can see it opening up a little. So just tightening that up will yeah, probably help. But it's smart of them to do that out of the box, probably. Because otherwise, people are going to be blowing servos left and right. OK, so that's some of the tip. Did you do anything to your shocks? Are you still running them just straight up how they were? Same springs and... I just think four steer looks so cool too when you're driving it. Oh yeah, it sets the body down some. Dana's saying the skid helps the bounciness of it. That's diff cover all day long. Just allows you to get traction with the rear that you don't have before. Like, totally different hope of getting out of your weird predicament. <laughs> nice. All right. Out of the box experience, definitely the best of these 24 scale yet. All right, we're going to tighten it up and see, though. Roll the camera on that and back away. That looks super cool. Oh, yeah, that's way better now. They're both matching, even on the... So tighten it down and... Crept right up here. Big tire. Lots of clearance walk. Nice. So the fact that you're not tipping over right now, the low weight's helping some for sure. But I would say that the little ones tip over more than these. So if these are being called tipsy, the, the stock SCX-10 then is like super tipsy because we've done some weird angles on these. Mine's bone stock and see that rear steer gets you out of stuff. Just out-of-the-box experiences. 
30 to 40 times better than a stock STX-10 as far as control. Sheesh. This is like cape crawlers flex out of the box, man. Holy cow. He makes some flexy trucks with the stock stuff. I could never get mine to do it, but this this does it. That's awesome. Let's see if it tips here. This is gonna be a weird angle. I can't show how wicked it's twisting right now. That's crazy. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, my goodness. I hope it pulls out of this. It looks like it could tip, but if it drops that front end, there it went. No way. <laughs> uh, I'm just giddy about it, man. Save mode. Turn it off for a second. I don't want the rear turning me. There it goes. Yeah, it's nice to be able to turn it on and off too. Everybody wanted it to be more where you, you would have a lever to do it or something, but it doesn't really feel necessary. This controller is working awesome. And you're able to switch between it being on and not so easily. And even without it on, it steers pretty good. what his does he's got the extras yeah it's a diff hanger the little guy racing what are these swamp kings I think I like the tread pattern better on these and other swamper type stuff. Because especially as you add weight, it's gonna, it's gonna need it. Beefy lines are. Yeah, that's a, that's a big one. Now the, um, the other thing will be is like if you start getting those stock or the, the knuckles for them that they sell, I wonder if Axial will come out with another option for a servo, because it's going to be hard to move them with those, especially on the front and rear. I, I don't know if you're going to need them on the rear. Yeah, know. more front. Yeah. yeah. Front yep. Oh, that's a nice line. So twisty. Sure. Guy that died here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> Was it good? Because he had a gold skull. Yeah. Okay, guys. First impressions are very, very awesome. I really enjoy this thing. Straight out of the box. So much flex. However, there were a few moments it tipped. And I think a lot of it has to do with when you're turning like this. It really is easier. There's there's certain points where you just make it easier to tip um, than if you have kind of that other wheel straight. I don't know. But it definitely felt like the, there was a little bit of a point where, I mean, it still takes quite a bit to tip. There's the breakover point. But you push it so much harder because of the four steer and you get into tighter angles. And I think that's part of what makes it feel like it tips so easily because overall... It doesn't tip nearly as easy as a stock SCX24 out of the box. They're pretty tippy. However, we've got several things we want to throw at this thing in uh, upcoming videos to really try to plant it a little bit more. So let's talk about those things. Now remember, none of these things are necessary. They just can improve your experience if you want to spend the money to do it. I've already spent the money to get one of the brass skid plates, as you see right here, um, from Axial, and that'll definitely help. These don't help a lot, but it does help a little. These are brass hexes that you can put on behind the wheels to help that a lot. 
Um, one of the other things that I really like are these right here. These are brass beadlock wheels, and these throw down a ton of weight, you guys. These are from Triel. So more than anything, if you want some down low weight, this is hefty. Um, on top of that, I do have at ccxrc.com brass axle casings. Um, I have them in black or in brass color, and these add some down low weight, and these are fronts, so you can put them on and just put some down low weight there. Um, I would say that the wheels are actually more substantial of a weight for you. These definitely have some heft to them, even more than eh, two axles. It's pretty close. Um, but that's a, a good way. If you don't want to do the whole axles, you could just do brass div covers. A lot of people are doing that. These add a little bit of weight down low to the axles, help keep it more planted. And that's what we're trying for. Um, you can do brass steering links, do front and rear. Again, get some more down low weight on here below the suspension. The thing about this one is it is above suspension and it will help kind of tuck that down hopefully a little so it'll sit, but then it'll allow it to just flex out of that. So just some upper weight isn't bad, especially as bouncy as that is. Um, there's brass knuckles that you can get that you can put on the, the, um, the axles. That would help. There's lots of ways you can really try to, to shape the truck and the handling of it based on how you uh, you work with it. But um, I think one of the, the biggest upgrades that is going to be crucial, though, if you put all that kind of weight on it, those servos are not going to probably handle all that weight sitting down on them and wanting to turn. Though They're doing pretty good right there, surprisingly. Um, so one of the things we have to figure out, though, is this is a different style of uh, servo mount that they've got here. So we're probably going to have to raise the servos up a little bit because of the way that the links flex. Uh, maybe maybe not. But if we cut away some of this and, and mount our servos that are longer, and they'll sit on top of that link maybe. And I'm wondering if that's going to cause any problem with it having so much flex. But when I'm actually looking at it, how it's flexing, it kind of, everything pulls away, so it goes down. And so I think it's actually good. It's just when it would stand up that you might have it hit, but that's not as huge of an issue. Um, so we could do some servo upgrades if the weights are a problem, as we're copying this out. And then um, the baby Goliath motor is saying it does fit. Um, go man, go. My buddy Dana, who was in the video with his truck, after we were done, he put one of these in. They do fit in here. Um, it's a tight fit, but it fits direct. You don't need any motor mount changes or anything. It'll just tuck in there, and it sits right in front of that other link in the back there. Um, so it's a longer, more powerful um, motor, and it'll give you a little bit more torque. Speeds are going to be about the same, but you definitely are going to feel the power of it. Um, he was bound up a few times, and the motor just wouldn't go anymore. It just wouldn't push against um, the embankment he was up against, and uh, that was problematic. So tires, it's a bummer these are glued because I would love to take these off and put these on those brass wheels and stick some foams in them. Um, so maybe I'll try just buying a set of these tires because I actually like the feel of them and the, the type of kind of... Uh, tread pattern they have here. I feel like it do pretty well. Uh, there's a lot of great tires out there right now. You know, scramblers are still my favorite, but for something this big, those little guy racing uh, Swamp Kings looked really good. Um, there you can see the suspension. A little bit of weight on that will definitely help keep it um, down and, and I'm sitting. But overall, very good opinions of this. Actually, don't hate the body. think it looks pretty cool in person just on here. Um, you know, the shaping of it seems so weird looking at pictures and whatnot, but in person, it looks like a comp truck. It looks really cool to me. So, uh, we're cutting all our bodies out to make them fit on these kind of things. And I don't mind it one bit. So there you have it, guys. That's my opinion on it. You can throw whatever you want at it. You could just drive it stock and have fun. In fact, we'll just throw all of our parts here in the middle and on our way out, we'll just let it eat them for a little bit. Just crawl right up on them. That's the stuff. The one thing, though, out of the box, guys, what I ended up doing is tightening these bolts down. I call them a nut. I don't know why, because I'm a nut, I guess. Uh, but these bolts for your servo saver, I just clamped it right down. 
Um, you may run into burning up servos that way if you bind them up and fight it too much, but I did not like it. Um, letting the rocks dictate what I wanted the tires to do. As you can see, I'm pushing against it now, and it's not. That servo saver is not given. So I'd prefer it to be that way. I'd prefer for the truck to, to push against something and move, if nothing else. So I don't want the servo savers doing anything. I want just raw power from the servo to the steering links to the wheels. But as you saw when I did that, they did bend. That's the other reason those brass, you can see it bend in there. You totally bend that. Um, that's the other reason that the brass steering links do help. Um, they, they do not bend like that. So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. As always, have fun RCing. We'll catch you next time.